most of the people forget 95% of the things that they learn in just one month. I mean, imagine going to class, making notes, spending hours and hours practicing or solving assignments. And then in a month, you don't even remember what you have even learned. But on the other side, there are people who can learn things much faster than you. Something that takes you 10 hours just takes them 3 hours. And once they learn something, they don't seem to forget anything. For example, Scott Young, the author of the book Ultra Learning. He finished his 4-year computer science degree at MIT in just 1 year. He has also been able to learn multiple languages in just a couple of months. And in this video, we'll talk about a few tips and techniques that you can start using from today to learn things much faster and better. So if you're someone who's in school, college or coaching, this video is going to be a gold mine for you. Most of the people think that learning equals to consuming information. That if you read more, watch more lectures, take more notes, you'll learn everything. But that's not how it works. Learning actually happens in two phases. Phase one is where you consume information through reading, watching or listening. But phase two is where you give yourself some time to process it, apply it and retrieve it later. But most of the people don't even care about the phase two and that's why they struggle to learn anything new. Remember, your brain is like a muscle. The more you practice, the stronger the connection between neurons become. And this is where meta-learning comes in. The skill of learning how to learn. And if you can master this, you'll be able to save a lot of time whenever you're learning something new. So listen to this carefully. Basically, there are three rules of meta-learning which are mentioned in this book. Rule number one is to understand the reason why you're learning something. Because the way that you'll study would be entirely different if you're preparing for an exam when compared to just learning for fun. And having this clarity makes a lot of difference because it defines what you'll be focusing on the most. So the rule number two is to figure out what are those minimum number of things that you should master in order to get the job done. For example, the classic case of most of the exams, where you can just look at the previous year questions and understand that there's a pattern so that you can smartly skip a few chapters here and there. And now the rule number three is to figure out how you'll be learning the things that you have shortlisted. A lot of students just read something and expect themselves to learn. Some of them just watch a lecture and be like, yeah, now I know everything. The point is, learning is not a passive process. It's an active process. And unless and until you read it, listen to it, consume it, and use some techniques to finally test yourself, you're not going to learn anything new. So now what are those techniques that you can use to make your learning process much more effective? Start taking notes because I'm pretty sure you'll forget this in a couple of days. Let's start with the first one. Always learn in three phases. Imagine I'm learning how to build an app, website, or just preparing for an exam. My first phase would be to just watch a couple of videos on it. The second phase would be practicing it because this is the phase where most of the learning usually happens. You'll also get a lot of doubts, but don't be scared to ask those doubts. Doesn't matter how stupid they are. Like how many times did you get a doubt in your class and you feel like, oh, I shouldn't be asking right now because my friends would be judging me. Don't do that because that is killing your growth. Now the third phase is the retrieval phase. Basically a phase where you test yourself after four to five days of learning something new, either by solving some questions or asking yourself more questions. So now the point is all these three phases are equally important. So whenever you're making a study schedule to study next time, make sure that you block time for all these three phases. Now the second technique is to start using tech to learn and revise. AI tools have become so good right now and some of them are literally free to use. There are three AI tools that I would like to suggest apart from OpenAI's ChatGPT. And the first one is Google's Notebook LM, which can summarize your notes, explain concepts, and the best part, it can also turn your study materials into a podcast where even you can ask questions. I've been using this for the past couple of months and I just love it. The second one is Google's AI Studio. And this one is actually more crazy because whenever you get a doubt, you can actually do a Google Meet with it, share your screen, ask your doubts, and it will answer all the questions that you ask in real time. It's like you're on a meet with an expert and the expert is answering all your questions in real time. Crazy, right? And the third tool is called Anki, which is basically a flashcard app which asks you questions in regular intervals of time about the new information that you have studied so that you don't get to forget it. I never use this one much, but a lot of people actually talk about it. And I think you should definitely try it once. Now, also let me know in the comments below if I should make a dedicated video on AI study tools for students. Because most of the other videos that I've watched on this topic are okay. Now, before we talk about the next method, which is the third method, I'd like to take 30 seconds to talk about the first batch of the study transformation program that I, along with my friend Kaushik from IIT Kharagpur, launched a couple of months ago. And if you don't know what it is, it is a program where we basically teach the science behind getting good at your studies. 
along with a mentor from an IIT who'd be there to guide you through your studies every day for the two months straight. I've myself made amazing lectures on the topics like how our brain works, how to read faster, different frameworks of learning, and so much more. And your mentors would be taking dedicated live sessions where they will be explaining you some concepts Plus, they'll also be answering all the doubts that you have. Basically, it's not just for people who are preparing for IIT JEE, but it's also for school students or college students who just wants to improve in their academics. And the first batch, you won't believe me, was immensely successful. The course was actually so good. Since I was able to do uh, two hours of work in 45 minutes, kind of, it was so effective. 14 day wall challenge, it was also a good thing. Like It helped me be consistent throughout. What was my problem? It was that I wasn't able to focus. So that helped me a lot, like the strategy which you told us in the cohort. I've been sitting on this chair like 10 to 12 hours every day. No distractions. Somehow my mind is not going. The whole 11th short notes I revised in like one week. And the second batch is starting from 5th March 2025. And if you are preparing for JE this year, you'll be getting extended mentor access till JE advanced exam. The link will be in the description. Now let's move on to the next method. The third one is a list of techniques to keep your brain active. Because studies show that on an average, if you're studying for four hours straight, then the effective study time is less than 25%. Which means your brain spent less than one hour actively learning the material. I mean, even I was shocked when I first got to know about this. But the best way to do here is to use the techniques like Pomodoro and Altradian Sprints. Because with these techniques, you'd actively spend some time learning something and then would actively take a break. So now you're getting into a phase of learning, taking a break, learning, taking a break. So now your brain actively knows what you have to do at what point of time. Which means you'll not end up daydreaming while you're learning something new. Very important. There's also one more technique called as the interleaving effect, which basically says that instead of studying the same subject for four hours straight, you should actually switch to a new subject after one to two hours of time. And this will make your brain actively focus on the reading material. And this also works much better because now your brain will start seeing a pattern between different subjects, which makes the entire learning process much more effective. The funda is simple. You need to keep your brain as active as possible while you're learning a new piece of information. As simple as that. Now the next important technique is the Feynman technique, which essentially says that whenever you read something new or whenever you learn something new, you should essentially close that book, take a new piece of paper and try to explain whatever you have learned in the most simplest manner. And while explaining that concept to yourself, if you get stuck, that is the exact concept that you need the revision with. In other words, if you can't explain it in the most simplest manner, then even you don't understand it well enough. Also remember, the person who puts most number of efforts while learning something new, be it in the form of making notes after the class, revising, practicing or anything else, he will end up learning the most. It's all the game of keeping your brain as active as possible while you're learning something new. There are also techniques like memory castle, visual learning because our brain learns much more through images rather than text. But I wanted to talk about the core learning methods in this video rather than just talking about remembering things. So yeah, here you go. This is all for the video. I hope you have made the notes. I hope you'll stick it to your wall because I'm pretty sure if you don't revise whatever we, I spoke in this video, you're going to forget it. And also remember, check out the study transformation program because last time the seeds got filled in like five, six days and a lot of people started writing messages, Kitarun, please open the batch, please open the batch. So the batch size is very small. It's like 100, 150. And we don't want to make it like too big because we want to give personalized attention to people. That is the goal. See you. Bye-bye.